This episode of Inside EMS Podcast is sponsored by LogRx. Learn a better way to track your narcotics at LogRx.com. Well, it's all about life, love, and the pursuit of happiness and going inside EMS. I am your host, Chris Subalera. I almost forgot my name there for a second, but Kelly Grayson is on special assignment, training the next generation of EMS provider. But have I got someone who is going to be just as good? He is the host of the EMS One Stop. He is a columnist for EMS One. He is our international correspondent. More importantly, he's a friend, Rob Lawrence. Thank you for sitting in the co-host chair. Again, we could always count on you, Rob, to come in and uh, pick up when you need. Well, Chris, you have me on speed dial, mate. And of course, when you call, I will respond. And of course, I'm delighted to be here and really spend some time with you and, and the listeners. I was very surprised that you took my call and putting King Charles on hold for me. And that was really nice of you to, you know, kind of tell the King, I got to get this call from Chris. So obviously any loyal British subject at the moment is stepping in and standing in for their Royal Highnesses on various official engagements. So I've, I've just given that a rest for the day. Good. Awesome. You know, Rob, I think, you know, you always come in kind of at the highest level of EMS you know, you know the premise of the show, Kelly and I, yep. two paramedics sitting in a truck. He takes the provider side, I take the leadership side. But when you come in, you bring a, a higher level, I think, of leadership, <laughs> more of a more of a fifty thousand foot view of leadership. And you are very, very active on the national front, seen as a go to leader in our career field. But from a political standpoint, when it comes to where EMS is going, you keep your finger on the pulse of legislation, you keep your finger on things that all of EMS needs to be a part of. I mean, we we say the term, when is someone going to do something? And really, the, the charge that you've taken up is, when is everyone going to step up and do something? So I, I think first, in this political environment that we're getting ready to go into in this legislative session, I mean, what's the big stink right now? What's the big thing that we've got to pay attention to? And then there are a few things we'll touch on as we go along. Well, first of all, if you think to way back when, when I was, you know, a COO, and, I, and now I'm a recovering COO, I was sort of came on and played the guy in the corner office. Yeah. Now I'm the guy on the corner of the local legislature and they're doing a lot of stuff with both the California Ambulance Association, where I have the role of executive director, with the American Ambulance Association, where I am the chair of the AAA State Association Forum. What does that mean? It means all of the, the states around the country, you have in the main an ambulance association or some sort of some sort of grouping. And we have a collective that meets at the AAA level in order to support each other up the way and down the way. And what I mean by that is, of course, the American Ambulance Association and, and to a degree, NEMT, of course, are doing stuff on the big hill. But of course, all of those elected officials come from somewhere. They come from a state, they come from a city, they come from a district. And therefore, having all of the ambulance associations and groupings working together means that we can actually push issues to the national situation. And of course, the folk on the national associations can use us to help them get in touch with their constituents on the ground level. So it's it's, it's a great relationship. I have the absolute honor to sit sort of in the middle of all of that, which is yeah. pretty cool. So I get to see what's happening, you know, at both ends of the spectrum. So that was kind of, that's enough about me, right? So let's just talk about the the, the issue here. And of course is, you know, you said, when are folk going to do something about it? My, my response is we are all part of it. Right. And it comes back down to the premise that I always present people. And it's that who's a politician you're the politician, we're the politician, because we drive around in a billboard that says EMS or ambulance or fire paramedic or whatever the, you know, the, the color of your truck is. Right. And actually, therefore, people can see what we do. And that inevitably is reported on, is observed on at the local level. It could be observed on at the state level and observed on at the national level. To get things done in EMS, we actually have to be convincing or be good at convincing our locally elected officials and on, on our state officials to observe and follow my Rob's three words, right? All all in favor, or four words, all those in favor, 
right? In, in other words, we have to influence politicians and politics in order to get stuff done right now. The big ticket items right now, inevitably, is the level of income that EMS is getting. And 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 again, I think pre-pandemic, Chris, people are like, oh, here we go again. We're talking about reimbursement. Actually, if we don't get money in, we can't pay money out. Where does that money out go? Of course, it goes into the most important thing, which is people and salaries. And we're now in direct competition with, you know, certain other cross sections of of industry and of retail where they're paying more money than we can afford to pay. Mm -hmm. And so we have to battle hard to in to increase our reimbursement, which in which therefore equates to income, which therefore equates to wages. Right. And so we are constantly legislating at every level, state and national to increase our lots. And it's not a case about we all want to go home in a Rolls Royce. Never, never did happen. But it's about the fact that we only get paid for one thing, and that's currently taking patients to hospital. And when you start to think about there's a cohort of patients we take and a cohort of patients we don't, we only make money for the cohort of patients we take. Therefore, we're getting an 80% return on 100% service. And so it's just the fact that I'm certainly focusing now on making sure that the reimbursement is working in order to make sure that it passes through. So long-winded answer, that's certainly focus number one. Yeah. And I think that one of the things that you talk about is a lot of people don't know that when it comes to reimbursement, EMS is not a cash cow. You know, you send a $1,500 ambulance bill out the door, you get 420 some odd dollars in reimbursement. That's a big loss for us, right? But there does seem to be a little bit of movement now as some states are increasing the Medicaid reimbursement. We're starting to see more states now taking the considerations of EMS and really kind of making difference. But before we get into that, I think it's really important for us to back up a little bit because you said something yep. that I think was very, very interesting where you said, we're the politicians. Let's back up into the grassroots, yep. right? Because we are going to talk about NAMT and, and, uh, and EMS on the Hill Day, which I think yep. is very important and having been there a few times, it's such a powerful opportunity to meet your lawmakers. But those lawmakers, Rob, are in our community as well. They have offices in our communities that yep. we need to be able to try to, we need to be able to work with those staffers and develop relationships with them so they can get to know us. But how important is that of just getting out into the community with your representatives, with your senators to say, come on out and get a ride along, see what we do. And then maybe you can help us later on down the road. Well, let, let's take it right back to grassroots. And I maybe should have done this in my first answer is that everybody works for somebody in EMS, right? Whether you were, you're a fire chief working at the pleasure of the local mayor or whether you are a, an ambulance service reporting to a board of some sort, inevitably you are reporting to someone and you wish to affect change. And the way that you affect change is actually by lobbying, whether it's the city council whether it's the district council, the board of supervisors, if you want to know whether you want to, whether it's a new fire truck you need or a new ambulance you need or more equipment outside of, you know, federal grants, you have to go to your local governing body and ask for more. And so therefore, how do you do that? Well, you actually have to win friends, influence people, convince them of the business case and also lobby. What does lobby mean? It means turning up and stating your case. And so whether it's at city level board of supervisor level, state level, we, we have to do that by turning up. How do we do that? Well, obviously, you have someone that's involved in a local association, whether it's your fire department, whether it's the regional district association, going into these group, these political groupings and saying, hey, we need better terms, better conditions. We need, and, and, and not only, and obviously trade unions are involved in this as well, right, in, in, in advocating for their people. And so the power of the folk out there when they put their uniform on when they get in front of these elected officials is absolute because of course everyone loves public safety first of all but also the fact is that our, our ability to deliver public safety is being impeded by the fact that we can't attract people because we can't pay people and so there's a kind of you know an, an absolute reason for us to become involved in in politics and politicking we can then take that up to the state level. You may have a, a state ambulance association or a governmental EMS association to actually change the laws of the state. Up again, an AMT, IFC, IFF. 
I, I said on my podcast, Chris, I would never do acronyms, right? And here I am abbreviating my way through this discussion. But on the national level, American Ambulance Association, National Association of EMTs, International Association of Fire Chiefs, International, I'll miss one, IFC, IFF, International Association of Firefighters, right. all working in lockstep to, in, to improve our lot. And it takes the grassroots membership, i.e. the guys on the truck, to help us do that by being present when we need them to, to tell their story when they when when they can and to actually help us to legislate so everybody's involved yeah so as we think about ems on the hill day it's coming up in april and what year is this rob i mean this has got to be oh i don't know and i'm just looking it's at, looking over 15 at the NEMT. years i think and uh, pardon us for not having that information but yep. it, it's been going on quite a bit uh might be 15 plus years that EMS in April, you know, floods the Capitol and we get to see our lawmakers. And I do want to talk about maybe some of the things that we would want to get across in the executive or in this political session. Yeah. Of course, EMS in the Hill Day is set up. It's very, very uh, coordinated. An AMT will have a list of bills that are, are very helpful for EMS. You meet the night before if you've never been. They brief you on what the bills are. They talk you through it. And then you'll kind of meet your committee, your entourage. Everybody from the state is scheduled. They take care of all that. You'll get a schedule that says, be here at this time, be here at this time. And regardless of your position, EMT, paramedic, FTO, you know, clinical person, operational person, you're going to get a chance to interact with your lawmakers and try to make a difference for them. And uh, Rob, you've been there before. I mean, g give us just kind of that overview of what that's like. It's, to it's really uh, feel like somebody's listening to us. It's interesting. First of all, I'm I'm the Brit in America, right? And I've done uh, EMS on the Hill and various other legislative activities many times. And I'm still amazed to to talk to folk for whom it is their first time in the national capital. And if you, but if nothing else, you should go to experience government at work right so for no, no other reason do it and go there NEMT on the hill day and just so you know you can read all about it at NEMT.org the date is April the 17th and April the 18th as you've already said on the first day there is a hill day check-in and a hill day briefing in this case it's the 17th what happens there well you get put into states you all come from a state and so the good folk at NEMT will identify who you are where you're coming from you'll be put at a table with people from your your state and then they would have worked out where you live so in other words you get a chance to go and visit your directly elected official from your district to your constituency or whatever you call your political division and actually get a chance to see them and meet them and say hey i'm i'm from your home i'm from your hometown and here's my story of the the issues or the successes or whatever's going on in my hometown at the same time somebody from an emt will be with you to actually say and actually here's some legislation that you can help us with to help your guy from your hometown improve their ems and so you're grouped on the day of the hill day as i've, as I've just kind of alluded to you're given slots to go out and meet your elected officials inevitably there's a fantastic photograph at lunchtime on the capitol steps which is a great keepsake and a great memento and also a great way to show that we're there right and then there's a post hill sort of debrief but uh, of course the important bit is to get our people in their uniforms on in the national capital in front of their elected officials because it's a very powerful message to send that we've come all this way and i'm leading the california delegation this this year i've come all this way to talk to you people because the members are you know that are with me all voted you in here are the very discreet ems issues we've had we'd love you to sign on to the initiatives and to the bills that we're supported now finally chris before i let you ask the next question NEMT on the Hill isn't only NEMT. I mentioned all of the other national associations. Inevitably, there will be the president of IFF, the president of IFC, the president of uh, AAA will be there on the day too, because of course, you know, we are hunting as a pack in terms of national legislation, such things as extending uh, Medicare, what, what are known as the extenders. It's it's a, one of those arbitrary things we have to go through. Whether it's advocating for the the Counts Act, right, which is an act, which is an act that says we don't actually know how many EMTs and paramedics are out there, which is craziness. But actually, there's some of the sort of some of the things that we're working on, and so. You, you're briefed on this. You have what's called leave behinds, which is a one pager that you leave behind with 
either the elected official or indeed a member of their staff, because it's not always given that you're going to meet the the member. You right. may meet the staffer. And we can talk about that because I've got a very strong opinion on this. But on the day you're there, you're in the face, you're in uniform, you're in the public eye, and it's a great impression to leave by being there. Because again, as I said, you have to be there. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and I think there's a lot more things to follow up on. I do want to take a quick break, Rob. And then on the other side of that, I do want to touch on working with the staffers, but then I want to get a little bit more into maybe some of the bills that are out there this year that everybody can be part of. But let's go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be back with you on the other side. Designed and founded by EMS professionals, LogRx provides real-time accountability of all your narcotics from cradle to grave. Reach out today for a demo and download the app on the iTunes and Google Play stores. And coming soon, LogRx will also track your medical supplies, equipment, PPE, and even vehicle checks. For more information, visit LogRx.com. That's L-O-G-R-X.com. And we are back with Rob Lawrence, our international correspondent to the Inside EMS podcast, and also the host of his own podcast, the EMS One Stop. If you are not a fan of Rob's show. I got to tell you, if you're not a fan of all Lexapol's show, I mean, Rob has a great show that's been going on. He gets some really great guests, probably better than the caliber of guests that we see over here on Inside <laughs> EMS, but uh, check him out. But then, you know, Policing Matters is a great show on Police One, and then Better Every Shift over on Fire Rescue One with Aaron Zamzow. I mean, just so many great podcasts on the Lex. In the I, 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 I have radio to say, system. I I am an avid fan of Inside EMS. I listen to you guys every week, and and I think we're doing two different things, right? And and here's the reason we have two different podcasts. That I'm now producing, maybe it's you want to call it long form storytelling. So, for example, I had the good folk from uh, Guildford County on talking about their their community paramedic slash EMT program. Before that, I had our friend, great friend Brian Gilby, talking about honourable but broken. And an opportunity to really lay it out. And of course, now we're using the medium of video. It's not just a case of talking heads on the screen, but actually we can overlay video excerpts. We can we can put slides up. And so as I always say when I'm doing my shows, Chris, that if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, make sure you watch us again on YouTube because you can see us. And also the visuals, graphics, charts, etc. did a fantastic show with the, the, the guys from Ambulances for Ukraine. Yeah. And actually were able to show all of the, you know, the ambulances going into Ukraine, but also the fact, you know, how they that they went from being, you know, peacetime ambulances to being painted green to being casualty evacuation battle ambulances. Yeah. And again, and we can see those those images. So I think everyone's doing amazing stuff. And of course, my mid-show read, by the way, here's Jim Dudley from Policing Matters, because I think he's got the coolest voice ever. So we're we're, awesome. we're all intertwining. Very cool. Very cool. And, you know, you got some great shows. And actually, you talked about Honorable But Not Broken. I actually listened to that show today. So that was really a good one. But anyway, you know, one of the things that you said before we went to break, Rob, was about staffers. Right. And, you know, when we talk about going into the grassroots and seeing our staffers in the office or seeing the staffers on Capitol Hill, I mean, who are they? They're nobody that's going to work with us and do what we need them to get done, are we? And I'm saying that facetiously because well, we both in, know the answer. You've fallen here. into my trap, mate. Uh -huh. So uh, again, uh, you know, I've been doing this long enough to to, to realise that uh, when somebody gets their hill visit list, whether it's at a state house or indeed, you know, on the big hill, they'll look and say, "Oh, I'm only seeing the legislative assistant." Frown, and I'm like, "Oh no, 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 stop!" Because what you're getting there is the person that's a done the research, that b writes the brief, probably writes the speech. And probably writes the notes that say, sign here, Senator, sign here, Assemblyman, because we're going to go with this. And so if you get onto these various, whether it's NEMT, EMS on the Hill, whether it's any sort of state association. And actually, I should plug the California Ambulance Association, my home team. If we're putting this out this week, next week, we're in Sacramento for our own stars of life. And we actually have 100 stars wow. from around the, the EMS agencies of California in the state capital of Sacramento. We're doing exactly this, right? So we're, we're all arriving there. Stars issued on a, the amazing people that are doing some fantastic things around the state. And then we're all going up onto the hill to A, put people in front of their local elected officials, and obviously then push the legislative agenda that we have in California. And it's the same deal on, on the national hill. But staffers are absolutely vital because 
if you think that your local elected official has the capacity, they probably do, but to, to remember any every last detail, that's yeah. why they have staff. And the staff are the ones that are writing the briefings, writing the speeches, retaining the knowledge. And so if you get a staffer, actually it means, or shall I say an American staffer, you are talking to the person that's probably writing the briefing. Right. And so it's not it's not a backward step at all. In fact, yeah. it's probably an equal step. So that, that, that's my point on that. And I always make a point of correcting people when they, you know, have a moment about, you know, staffers. And that was the great setup that I gave you, knowing that myself, that it's the staffers that you really want to spend time. You know, the senators and sometimes the congressmen are looking for their next meeting. Whereas if you can get time with the staffers, they, they really spend the time with you. But, you know, so when we think about this legislative session, Rob, I mean, what is it that we really want to try to get done? I mean, uh, we were kind of talking about we don't really know the bills that are going on. We don't really know what NEMT has in store for us for EMS on the Hill Day. But you've got your finger on the pulse of politics, not only in the state of California, but around the United States. What's out there that we got to pay attention to? So some some of the big things, and it might not be of great interest to the folk on the truck, but something that's vitally important right now is a thing called the cost collection survey. And one of the big arguments we've had for many years is that people want to know what we're worth. And of course, the honest answer is, well, we need to identify what the costs are, whether it's people, whether it's equipment, whether it's ambulances, et cetera, in order to identify the operational cost of doing business. And so CMS have come up with four years worth of cost collection survey where organizations, and it's not only just ambulance services, anybody that's produced, anyone that's that's getting reimbursed by EMS is actually having to take part in this survey that identifies all of their costs in doing EMS ambulance business. And so we're now in year two of that, and it's an ongoing four-year program. So eventually they'll go, we've surveyed everybody. This is how much, this is the cost of doing business. So that's ongoing. The other big ticket item that's out there is is sort of, possibly contentious, but balanced billing. Now, what is balanced billing? It's when you have the cost that the ambulance service charges versus the cost that the insurance company will pay you. And of course, inevitably, there may well be a difference there. And back in the day, the patient or, or, st or the patient is potentially on the hook to pay the difference between the ambulance charge and the insurance charge. And so air ambulances have now been brought into balanced billing legislation, which means they cannot bill the patient anymore because clearly their costs are well defined and so air ambulances can't you know bill you the difference between the insurance and the and the rate of doing the job which is huge uh, it was huge which which was huge now ground ambulance was exempt from this because of the thing i've just said that we don't really know truly how much it costs to do business and so there's an exemption at the moment for ground ambulance However, some states have actually now put in balance billing legislation. In California recently, we had balance billing legislation put in, which means that ambulance companies can't balance bill or send the bill to the patient for the difference between what it costs to do the job and what the insurance company's paying. But the caveat that we put in there is that there is already a rate set by the local governing body, the district, the, the, the county, mm -hmm. for the delivery of ailment services. And so that was actually set up through a financial process of actually, you know, the, the, it, it's set. It's not just a number they pluck out of the air. It's based on the cost of doing business. And so whilst there is no more balanced billing in California, the insurance company shall pay the rate that's set by the local authority, the local ca the county, the local county. And so actually it takes the patient out of the middle. It means that whatever was determined as that rate is now set in a tablet of stone and therefore we're reimbursed for that rock for that amount. And so it's a good thing that the patient's out of the middle. It's a good thing that we, we've now got this sorted out. That's at state level. Other places, Louisiana, Texas, have have this this legislation as well. I think Massachusetts are working on it. And so we're just sort of slowly legislating our way into actually being reimbursed that the rate that it costs to do the job whereas yeah. before i have to say that insurance companies would give you the rate they determined they thought you you deserved but it had no bearing on the actual cost of doing business hey rob let me ask you a question i mean it, it seems that there's a lot of movement on this topic for ems lately but we've been in this boat for 30 years right what is it? Why is the catalyst hot? Now? I mean, why is the iron hot now that we're finally starting to see some movement? Was it COVID? Was it the, the ending of ET3? I mean, what, what's the catalyst now for, you know, these lawmakers to finally sit up and say, oh, my gosh, we're going to lose our EMS? 
it, it's it's one of those questions with which we don't have enough time left to answer it. But let's try and pick out some key things. I don't think the demise of ET three had anything to do with the, the balance billing work that, that has gone on. Obviously, the, the fact we've lost ET three. If Matt Zavadsky was on, he would say you don't you don't have to stop because that's gone away. You could continue yeah. to run those types of programs, providing you have some sort of telemedicine outlet, some and a payer connection, etc. So, I think that's we'll, we'll park that for a second. I think during COVID, particularly, we lost a lot of people in in a, in the sense of in New York. Yes, we lost a lot of people, but in recruiting and retention terms, we lost a lot of people. And obviously, we then get into the kind of spiral of to keep people, you have to pay them more. Well, how do we get reimbursed? How do, how do we pay them more? Well, you know, unlike your local target, where we could just simply put up our, our retail prices in order to make more money to pay our people more. In EMS, we can't because the aforementioned insurance reimbursement is problematic. The amount you get from Medicare, Medicaid, or in California, Medi-Cal is set. The number is the number. Take it or leave it. And so we have to start to legislate for increases now like we've never done before. Also, because of this financial effect, we're, we're, we're starting to see, certainly since the pandemic, the amount of organizations closing increase exponentially. And so you now have the great term ambulance desert. It's not a great term at all. It means that the amount of distance between ambulance stations and ambulance providers is increasing. On top of that, we're also seeing hospital closures. What does that mean? It means if a hospital's closed, whilst the ambulance service may still be open, you now have further to transport the patient. If you have to transport the patient further, it takes longer. Therefore, the loop time increases and therefore ambulance availability decreases. And of course, don't get me started on war time, where we're just waiting for a long, long time. So there's a lot of compounding factors there, which we're trying to legislate our way through right now. So never before have we had such challenges, I don't think. But also never before have we had what came out of COVID, all of our national associations getting together to say, listen, you know, there are things that we disagree on, but actually there's quite a lot that we agree on. And therefore, we need to work on those things. And they tend to be national legislative issues in order to get stuff done. And so there's now a renewed energy and a focus, literally, to get stuff done. Yeah, and I think that that's a great, I mean, one of the things that I think is important is everything you said is just so important, but it's so simple, right? And we've got to be able to be on the receiving end of that simple and really kind of do our share. So we are getting up there in time, man. Look over at the time, and we're almost to 30 minutes, Rob. When you're on, it's just by. it's just riveting. It's just riveting. <laughs> so here's two things that I want you to do for us as we get ready to get to close. One is maybe give us the highlights or the tips that you have for the listeners out there about legislation. Number two is give us a shout out for the EMS One Stop and uh, try to get some of those EMS One listeners over there to your place. Well, first of all, my answer is get involved. You may well have a local association, a state association, or indeed a national association that you can join and be a part of. And of course, they're doing great things to promote the lot of EMS out there. So, you know, work out who's around and join in because, of course, we need voices. We need people. We need people to convey the message. And so there's something for someone, something for everyone. Um, I also just have to acknowledge, Chris, our our labor organizations and uh, a lot of legislation that we got through in California last year. We couldn't have done it without the partnerships of such organizations as AFSME, of uh, SEIU NAGE, um, of United Steelworkers, would you believe? And so any labor organization in California that looks after EM EMTs and paramedics actually we were in partnership with and uh, again you know when you have things that you agree on then you should work agreeably together to get stuff fixed and i'll kind of leave that there so whether you're in a, a trade union or whether you're in an association a lot of the legislation that we need to work out right now can be done together because again i'm just using the california example our, our, our labor colleagues always and quite rightfully are advocating for for more pay for their staff our point is well, we can't pay you more until we've got the legal bit so the legislation sorted out solution well let's work together then and it and it works so that get involved that's that ems one stop yes please come and join me over on the ems one stop but as i said we tend to do more now long form discussion storytelling and obviously the ability on video to lay out 
a lot of the issues that we're talking about on 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 whether it's slides graphs charts or just video clips and take a look in the back catalog we're both chris kelly and i are on ems1 on youtube so you can literally go onto youtube and you can catch all of our shows mine or or ems what are you who are you this week yes inside ems yeah yeah and so take a look at that and uh, come and join us. I'm probably doing one or two a month now because obviously I want to get to tell a great story for everybody. And so I look forward to seeing you on the other side. Well, I am a fan of the show. And if you're not a fan of the MS One Stop, go in and check it out. And I got to tell you, man, this was a good show. I mean, we, we're getting a little bit uh, macroscopic when it comes to the things that our career field has to do. This isn't about... When is someone going to do something? This is, as Rob said, you've got to be able to get involved in this process as well. You know, the the dinosaurs of EMS, Rob and I and Kelly and some of the other names that are uh, getting up there in age, we're going to have to pass the gauntlet off to one of you guys for you to kind of pick it up once we're gone, right? So everybody has that opportunity. But go ahead and send us your thoughts, your comments. If you've been to EMS on the Hill Day or if you've been to your local legislative branch, Tell us about it in an email at the show at ems1.com. I'm Chris Sabalero, and for Kelly Grayson, I want to thank you for joining. And for our guest and international correspondent, the one and only Rob Lawrence. We'll catch everyone again real soon, and we'll chat with you next week. Take care. Bye for now.